start out with the introduction of members. So, sorry, Sandy. Uh, Sandy Forrest, City of Delphi. Jim Heaney, Burlington and Young Representatives. Jeff Watson, representative of the County Commissioner. Doug Walker, representative of the schools. Brad Flower, County Council. Mary Ann Burton, City of Delphi. Don Chocolate, Rickard County Square. Corey Mills, Paige Newsbury, Plan. Cameron Yates, Area Plan Director. Cindy Harmon, Legal Counsel. Moving on to approval of the minutes from the last meeting. Are there any additions or corrections that need to be made? There are none. I'll entertain a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I move to approve the minutes from the July meeting. Second. Any other discussion? So this is what we've been working on since 2021. We introduced it early last year. Um, you guys are aware of the circumstances behind it when we had the uh, rezone in Burlington. Uh, a homeowner could not uh, sell their home due to it being located within the, the business district, of which we had a couple in Delphi. Um, and we've had a few others since then. So with that said, um, I reached out to Deb Lazier, who is here tonight. Thank you, Deb, for making the trip. Um, and kind of uh, tossed around some ideas of what can we do to keep houses and homeowners from that's in this district to where uh, businesses were planned to be there in the 70s when they zoned it out. Just never happened a lot of times because it's getting to be a common thing that a homeowner tries to sell their home and the, the banks say we're not going to give you an interest rate for home when it's zoned business. So uh, Deb come up with the, uh, this is something that's common and it's uh, getting to be an issue in a lot of smaller communities. <coughs> use zoning, which uh, the language covers uh, what we have there now, and then it also adds some options for each community within, such as Camden, Burlington, um, and Yeoman. Yeah, Burlington voted on theirs last month, um, gave us the approval to get where we are tonight. Camden, same thing. Um, everybody that I've spoken to, um, even Yeoman, has been on board with it. Um, whether or not uh, Yeoman uses it, I'm not real sure. They don't have as much of a, uh, an issue as the other two communities I just mentioned. Delphi, uh, not real sure what they're going to do uh, after tonight. So after tonight, if we do approve it, it'll go to each entity and they can 60 days, I believe, is the time frame. 90. 90 days. They have 90 days to adopt it um, if they so choose. So again, this this will be a win-win for everybody in the smaller communities that has homes within this business district. So um, that's that in a nutshell. And this has been a project that we're trying to get wrapped up for some time with COVID and all that. It's, it's been a challenge. So I'm, I'm glad to see where it's at now. I appreciate Deb's help and Cindy's help. And, several emails on it, so I haven't heard a negative thing about it yet, so. Any questions or comments from the board? I haven't been heard this before. We've been doing this for a while. What zoning uh, area is to replace it? How does it work? I don't understand. So, does the business districts, let's just take uh, Burlington. The, from 4th to 9th Street, they have a business district. Uh, to answer your question, I guess that each entity can put it where they want. Right. They, they can choose within their incorporated limits where they want to put it. The main purpose of this is within the business district, which most towns is right down Main Street, um, where there's already a house there, like the rezone we had last year that was on, I think, 4th. There, there never was there. A couple doors down from Walmart. Yeah, rezone there. Yeah, yep. yeah. And then we had one over by, uh, I think it's. We one block in, over, we had one in Right, Delphi. we had in Burlington, too. Yeah, so each town can pick where they want to put it. So, so the mixed use, just business. Chances are being called mixed use eventually. 
gave them two periods. They could go, I didn't realize back when I read the street set, I was saying six on any commercial one. You know, you gave the street set money. Correct. Because this language has, you know, it has language for what's there now. And then, so let's just say, we get calls often on, what happens if this house that's in the zone, the business zoning burns down? Can they rebuild it exactly the way it is? Uh, and with this zoning, that, that makes it a lot easier to answer because now we can say, yes, we can. Before, no, it, it's zoned business, so you can't put this house back. It's not zoned residential, it's zoned business, so they'll have to rezone it first, go through that process, and then they can go to the court. And with this, it's already in the mixed use of residential and business, so it would follow up the guidelines where they can immediately start building again. So. That's, all, that's all the good side of it. See, I'm looking at the bottom side is a lot of businesses here now, when it's out and the new one goes in, so I go to the BPA to get approval. Permitted uses. And then you look on the back page, and one just has to have a special exception. Oh, and things change, change a lot. And it's lot sizes, 40, 40, 40, 40 what lot sizes. That means we have a lot within that thing we can't take. If it's zone business now, we can't. You know, it's zone business now, I can take it. If a neighbor needs 10 foot, I can sell him 10 foot of my lot. He can have his lot bigger than he can have his business. We're fine. Here, you're not going to be able to do it because so, the lot size is 40 by a certain size, right? Right. And you're not going to be able to. Take those if it's an existing things. lot, if it's pre-existing, it's a non-conforming lot. So you can utilize it without any hoops. But if you're going to create new lots, then it would need yeah. to meet these standards. You see, you don't have it in the business district now. You take a lot, you take five feet off the side, somebody needs it. So I, I'm really turned off by this whole thing because it's more government intervention in the small business. It's Bottom not. Line. It's not government intervention. It's to help the homeowners of what we've dealt with in this board at least four times now. I understand that. you got a whole page of, whole page of things that's got to have a special exception here. Well, more, more of those ones are in the wild. Okay, this is the first, we've had this out for a year now, and this is the first I've heard opposition from a board member. So I, I guess this sorry, is my opinion. No, 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 no I'm saying so this is the first I've heard of anybody having anything against what it was because I gave everybody the opportunity to say, do we need to change it? Do we need to tweak some things? Several emails, but I didn't get an email back. So then we rolled with it. So if there was changes that needed to be made, we had that opportunity to do it. We had over a year to do it. So. Well, my opinion don't count then, right? Did I say that? I didn't say your opinion didn't count. I just said that you had the opportunity to put your two cents in. And I never heard anything back. So you're, if you would have chimed in and said, hey, let's talk about this. Let's change it up a little bit. It would have been discussed. and. The board, the board would decide on how many different counties have something very similar to this many counties especially area plan commissions that are trying to oversee the unincorporated areas and some incorporated areas as well and they're also dealing with the same situation where you had the properties that were zoned commercial back in the 60s and 70s and then homes went up and now the standards wouldn't let you rebuild um, have they have many issues with it no, um, the most recent one we worked on was Clark County, where Jeffersonville is down along the Ohio River in Louisville. Yep. And it's actually, like Cameron said, solved a lot of headaches and allowed property owners to refinance, to rebuild, all those things without going through a bunch of unnecessary hoops. Okay, thank you. Anything else from the board? Ordinance, new zoning ordinance at 609. We'll start with the first row. If anybody would like to make a comment, come up to the microphone, state your name, and kind of where you're from, your district, city, or yes, or town. Um, we'll just start with the first row. Is there anybody that wants to make a comment on the first row? Second row. Third row. Back row. Those public comments at 6:10. So mm -hmm. there was none. I will now entertain a motion to accept this ordinance from the board, so we can move forward and update our. Right? What else? That we 
would you, we need a motion that um, I will now entertain a motion to make a favorable, favorable recommendation to the various other towns and other entities regarding this ordinance. So moved. Second. Okay. No seconds. Any other comments or concerns from the board before we vote? Seeing as there is none, we'll move on. All those in favor say aye. Any comments or questions from the board regarding this rezoning? Um, I had a chance to talk to Jordan, and then Jordan um, also did some research. So um, I think everybody there is in favor of it. The only concern I have is whatever industry decides if they ever use it, um, that we find a way to increase the traffic on the 218 and on the county road. And I have reservations about leaving it as infinitely available. Uh, I feel like we can put restrictions on the number of years. Uh, I, just, I, 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 uh, I feel strongly against zoning away from agriculture when they're really not planned and leaving it that way. So that's a good protection. Like I spoke of last month with the project that did not happen on 75, um, that when I revert back to it, it's wrinkled so that's the, the case for for this one as well, and I presented that one with the um, last month's rezone of Kirkhoff. However, the commissioner decided to rezone it and let those options fall as they are. So I will present that if that's what is agreed upon tonight. However, the final approval will be with the county commissioner. Anything else from the board? I heard that we didn't end up with a, the WSP that close to the town, um, which I know that that's not something we can do tonight. Um, but I, I too would like to see it revert back to Ag. Um, so maybe put like another timeline on it. Yeah, so like maybe 20 years since there is an
asked for 15 for the Kirkhoff, which again, I'll present that to the commissioner. They'll vote on what they yeah. We need to go ahead and get a recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I see, but I, I've talked to Jordan, actually, I've talked to Neil about this. Um, I don't want to see farm ground go either, but at the same time, though, talking with Jake about different things for economic, economic development purposes, you'd like to have you know various options for developers to come and see that are already zoned for them to come in and immediately start developing. So I would actually, I think that's probably not a bad idea to put a covenant on it that it reverts back. So you now I need to open up public comments, right? Public comments on the JT Farms rezone, which is east of Camden. Uh, first row, again, if you have any comments, come up to the microphone, state your name, where you're from, and whatnot, and then go from there. First row, is there any comments? No, nope. seeing as there is none. Second row. Good evening, everybody. I'm Mark Schock, uh, Vice Chairman of the Town Council of Camden. Lifelong resident, proud Delphi Oracles. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> uh, just to give you a little history, I don't know what you guys really know about this. Um, so uh, this is my second term on the council, but we were looking at, uh, I was working with Pete Wagner. You remember Pete, a lot of you guys probably know Pete, passed away since, but he's on the, the Camden Flora Rail Commission. And you know, we had the Eikenberry property, south of town and, and it never materialized and I started looking at the, the beacon, the old county beacon and stuff and I noticed this land, this, we wanted something closer to Camden because we're committed to running utilities, um, sewage and water, plus we were looking at annexation to extend our, our tax base basically. And uh, we do have two options. We've been in talks for several years actually, about a year and a half probably with uh, people along 218, then we have two options that we're going towards. We're working with our city engineer, our town engineer. We'd like to get a grant to tear down the, the Green Tree Building. If you know that right, right, that's the right east of the tracks. It's an eyesore now. If you drive by there, it's really bad. Nothing's been done. You got it on there. And then also, with uh, we've been in talks with Blackburn and Trucking that we could have uh, an option off 218 there too. And Mr. Blackburn's real interested. Um, I feel like the Herb family, they got their name on this. I think if, you know, if there was something, we're, we don't want a WSB either. We don't even want the controversy, you know. Carroll County gets enough bad press, I think, sometimes. And we're wanting to do something better. Um, I'm all about Ag too. I know we're an Ag community, but we need to, to diversify. We need some work. We have the drain. Our, our young folks are moving away. We're becoming bedroom communities. Um, if we could get something in there with good wages, um, you know, environmentally safe, I think it's, it's the ideal thing. And I do know that the state EDC um, recognizes this property as one of the prime properties in the state of Indiana with the rail, with the Genesee Wyoming Railroad taking over that rail. And they're going to do, they've committed to doing updates and stuff to the rail. So I think it could benefit Flora, you know, eventually, and other businesses may be, may be looking too. But with us living there, being a lifelong resident, we want just something positive to happen. Uh, as a covenant, that's, I don't know how that works, but I think it's pretty standard that you guys would put something, sometime a time limit on it to revert back to Ag if nothing happens. So, so if you have any, any questions? I do. Um, we had um, our clerk draft a letter, but I've spoken with uh, both board members of Camden, and they're 100% on board with this. So, yes, We've been working on this for years. It takes years to get industrial. Like that. Is 15 years the right time frame for you? Because if you started today, really hot and heavy, it's going to be eight years for you. They got seven or eight years to bring something down because you're going to bring what you want, right? Not just anything. No, we're going to, I think, uh, the Herb brothers have. Can express that they want to work with the town of Camden. You know, they're not they're not just going to do something, a knee-jerk reaction. So it's got to be, that's why they've included us from the beginning on this. 
you think a 15 year time frame well, is the right, right number for you to might, be working on it? You can correct me if I'm wrong, but I mean, if you set a 15 year time limit and something happens, there can be an extension or, mm -hmm. you know, come back to you guys for approval. Right. Is, isn't that how it works? I mean, yeah, that's what yeah. we did on the last one. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I typically, I would, you know, if something doesn't happen in that time frame and, and there's still interest, you know, I'm still around. <laughs> Would look at coming back and asking for an extension. So you think 15 would be the right thing for you? I think it's typical with what you did. From what I'm from what hearing, it's 15 on the property off 218 here. Is that it was 15, and then the, the Wagner was 10. Or the I can Wagner was 10. No, I think 15 would be better under 20. I just don't know what the standard is. You know, you guys have a precedent, I'm sure, already. So that's your decision. But, um, I'm not, I'm not an expert in that area. I just know if you have 15 and you could ask for an extension if something came around. And it's unbelievable how quick 15 years will be your problems. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Third row, any public comments? Oh, oh Second Neil, sorry. <laughs> Yeah. Neil Herr, um, part of JNT Farms. I thought the matters then is messing on the JT and JNT. I know that is. <laughs> right in front of me, Neil. But I also want to just point out um, <clears throat> my son will be sixth generation farmer. So as far as ag, I mean, it's yeah. what we know. But also we look around at Carroll County. Mark's made a valid point that um, our kids are leaving our tax base. Whoa. Um, and I mean, we had conversations with the town of Canton, and the big thing is, is that farm doesn't owe me a dime. I make money on it every year, or I wouldn't do it. But if, if there's an opportunity for high bank jobs to work closer to the town of Canton and, and the county to bring in something that's going to be attractive, we also have to understand we've got to get the balance to bring revenue into this county. I want my kid to be able to stay. I don't want him to have to drive a lot yet to get what he needs. I don't want him to drive to go to get what he needs. I want him to come to Delphi or a cannon, and that, that could be an anchor to do that. All right. So, um, but I mean, it comes down to one thing. I don't want to give up land, but if it benefits the county, then yeah, I'll go try and find more. But I was to make it clear, we're working with six generation partners. So, yeah, right, thanks. Thanks, Neil. Thank you, Neil. Third row, any <coughs> public comments regarding this? Fourth row. Everett Snowberger, I live at uh, 391 North Illinois Street, Camden. And uh, the only objection I have is when you rezone to I-1, I-2, we go to the zoning ordinance and there's a certain amount of <coughs> uses. Anybody who would come in would request to get a building permit for that on that property, the county could grant that without any any uh, question whatsoever to any of the uh, any of the governing bodies and stuff. Uh, WSB up in Bloomsport got kind of slid through on the sly up there uh, because it was during COVID and they didn't hold the public hearings as they should. You know, and my only concern would be that uh, under the permitted uses, there might be some things in there. That too welcome, well, and if you could put a restriction on there that uh, uh, could have a variance hearing before granting a permit, that would probably make it palatable to uh, all the residents of Canada. Yeah. That way we wouldn't end up with uh, something like they have Southwest Wilderness Court for as a really massive air pollution. Thanks. You mean variance such as it, what we're looking at now? did not happen and they want to bring in something yeah, completely out of the realm of commercial? Is that what you're... Right. Well, for instance, uh, I think one of them is a creosote plant. I know there's not going to be creosote plants built today, but, you know, if somebody did come in, they could build, they could install a creosote plant because that is permitted use in I-1. And anything that's in I-1, right, that or maybe it's I-2. <laughs> and, uh, and those permitted use, you would be granting a permit without any question whatsoever, correct? And that might not be as welcome by the uh, residents of the county camp. So that's 
So you know, you could do it with a uh, with a variance. You know, then you've got a public hearing and, and opportunity for the public to voice their opinion. And if nobody objects, then it's not a problem. I have full faith in the town of Camden and the property owner that they'll make sure the right thing goes in there. They don't have a, they don't have a voice. If it's a permitted use, they don't have a voice. They gotta sell it to them first. Yeah. <laughs> well, you gotta sell it to them first. So if they don't like the buyer, they don't have to sell it to them. The town of Camden, if they don't like if the town of Camden doesn't like the buyer, they don't have a, a voice. I have full faith in the owner of the property and faith, faith in the town of Camden to do the right thing on that, so I don't think we need a variance. But if the board decides that they want a variance, that's up to the board. But I will entertain any other public comments. Closing public comments at 626. a recommend or a motion from the board for a favorable recommendation to rezone with a covenant of 15 years and it'll get reverted back to agriculture. I can make that motion. There you go. I'm sorry. Jim seconds. Any other comments or questions from the board? All those in favor say aye. 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 Rezone on the list is Hammond's development. Everyone, give us a summary of this, please. Sure. Uh, Hammond's development LLC uh, submitted an application to rezone the property located at 921 South Washington in the city of Delphi. The rezone was properly advertised in the comment on August 10th. Um, this is the building directly across from uh, the Marathon gas station. South end of town that used to be Ryan Hart Grill. It's currently his own business. Uh, they have the wish to uh, rezone it to U1, which <coughs> matches up with the, the area. Um, <coughs> staff's opinion the rezone of this property would not impede the orderly development of surrounding properties, general welfare of the public, or adjoining property owners. Um, staff provides a favorable recommendation for rezoning of this property. Are present. Okay. Would you like to make a go ahead? Sure. Good evening, everyone. I'm Mark Hammonds from the Wilmington Sport. Um, Hammond, there's another piece of property, but we can, it's just a uh, stone store from it. Uh, that, I thought I saw that one. Right? Yeah, we had two of them that we were doing, but I can cover both. So. As, as Cameron mentioned, the Reinhardt uh, really building, uh, we bought it, and we want to convert that back to a home, a single family home. Our intention with that property would be then to subdivide it, split kind of the property almost right in half, and I'd like to be able to build a, a one duplex, a two unit duplex. And I have some materials that I can share with you as to what we would do and how it would fit on the lot. Cameron, do you want to hit these one at a time? Yeah. Yes, that goes through. So well, this one is the rezone, the other one is special exception. Special exception. So this is the only one that's rezoned. Then okay. we'll do the one that's special exception. That's BCA here. BCA. BCA. Okay. Yeah. Separate. And okay. so now currently it's one lot. What size is that lot? It is one of the area four. It's on your sheet. I can have all your sheets. And mine's just beacon information, but the lot is beacon represents it is uh, 171.5 by 90 with the existing house all the way at the northwest corner of that property. So our, our, our plan would obviously allow for variances for the existing house and any new construction, but then to build uh, a duplex. And this, this would be actually, this is the the building that we are considering right now, putting up. So we'll pass this around if you like. 
I just apologize. This, this has a structure, so you're going to put it on, or split that property off and put that on the end. Yeah. Okay. No, that's your rear. What are we discussing? The Reinhardt property, or are we discussing the yeah. lot for the duplex? That's part of it. That's part of it. We're just dealing with it as okay. one lot. Yeah. yeah. For right now, it's one lot. I'll pass this around for you. I'll, I'll just orient you. I'm not an architect, as you can tell, but I'm pretty good at graph paper, and it is to scale. Okay. So the existing uh, plot on there is this property that's outlined in green. That's the existing uh, property. This is the existing house in the garage, and our goal then would be to subdivide this and create another lot out of it. And then to build the house that I've shown you there, this is it dimensionally. All these, all these lines are just roof lines. But it shows, we'll show you how it would fit. The red lines there are the setbacks. Okay. So if you wanted to split it, that, I just kind of put a generic line down the middle just so you guys can see what the confusion by introducing both elements yeah. to this from our regard but tonight is really only about rezoning Correct. the Correct. existing Correct. lot and then I'll follow up with you to get the rest of it done. Correct. Correct. Tonight's just to get it from out of the business yeah. zone classification. But does, so, I mean, do we have to, I mean, these one of the setbacks for U2 we're doing U1. We don't have setbacks on the, it's not a setback, it's a rezoning. So we no, but what he's saying is, if, if you don't you can't build it. Well, then they have to re, re, rezone it again. Yeah. yeah, you'd have to do, or do a special exception. Yeah, again, pay another two hundred dollars. Right. So that's why we're saying I don't. Could your drive come off a of bike street? Or your, or is it? Not this building design. Everything is kind of off of the bike street. Not this building design. Everything is kind of off the, the front of it. So if, if you take yeah, a link, it's long. Long. It's long, it's, long. Yeah. Because yeah. the garage is located right in between here. Just to be advertised. So if we put it YouTube, it'd be. Can I check? 
the way I did it, I came around with the information that I thought I had correctly, too many numbers. But I thought it was a 25 foot uh, variance on the front, 15 on the back, and seven on each side. Is that U2 or? Well, it's got, it's got U1, U2, and then it's got separate uh, for multifamily, single family, and all of that chart. Right? Okay, and I, I probably yeah. wasn't able to follow that or got confused. There's about a lot of numbers so with it. Yeah. Because, mm -hmm. because everything is U1, you'd probably be better off going back to U1 to blend in and then ask for a special exception. Special exception. Yeah. 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 Just for setbacks. Just for setbacks. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I wouldn't want a U2. But you're going to have a U2 right in the middle of this. Right. Middle of everything. No. Because everything else around it is U1. Is U1. Yeah. Gotcha. I bet. Even for the second part of that law, if he comes back in the state, will let him come off on Washington Street or there's restrictions on it. And he's got a review. He's got options on the bike street. Yeah, he's got it. That's not us. That's not us. That's the VCA here. Roughly, yeah. And if he flipped around, they would work to the right. I couldn't, you know. Because if off Vine Street, I would think it was their interest. It would be. Yeah, I, I would have done that, but I don't know if Vine Street is a bona fide street, you know, it's where I street. could use it. It's a city street. Yeah. Okay. okay. 25 there versus, you got to back 30 grand and, and that out here, not built on. So it's 35, and it'd be 35 for this major reductor by the Yeah. I'd rather back out on Vine Street if we find the there. Yeah. But, in the state, uh, when they do their investigation mm -hmm. on any kind of drive that comes off of a state road, they're going to ask for traffic. Count how many people they're going to do an extensive study on. So, yeah. to make, cause that's mm -hmm. obviously and that's very, very busy. To give, the, give a curb cut. That's for them to give you a, the city will give, uh, give you a curb cut, but the state, since it's attached to a state and federal road, US 421, they have to be approval for anything Anything that you change on that, since it's going to be a change of use. Yeah. This is an empty lot now, you're going to put a structure on there, the state will say, you know, they'll make the guidelines and they're very tedious on them. So that's well, hope that it's a it because the house has a, a drive right off of or right. right off of Washington. Yeah, one drive's okay. One drive, one dwelling, one family. But the drive off of different that is than actually an alley. Alley. So I went I went through that with the state is not interesting. It's a drive <laughs> and a yeah, is it both. Drive it's an alley, alley and, and a drive. An alley. Yeah. Yeah. No they very particular. The alley. So we just uh, did an asphalt coating on the driveway, mm -hmm. which is beside the alley. So right. there is an actual drive. Yes. Right, there is, but it's just the asphalt go all, what you just the backed up, go all the way to the? All the way to the highway. Does it? Okay. It looks like the real wide one, but half of it is the drive and half of it is You can see right here, Marion, if I hit the road right away there. I can't picture it in my head. Anything I hit now that's going to show that this is the Okay. Okay. Not 100% accurate speaking, but this is the it's road right away. Okay. Then you yeah, can yeah. see the see the garage right behind the house there. That is the driveway right in front of it. Right in front of it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And they did just reseal it so you can see it easily now. Yeah. 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 a motion to make a favorable recommendation to rezone this to U1 to the city of Delphi. So do that. Yeah, Jeff, Jeff makes the motion and Doug seconds. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed? Motion carries. I will get you the paperwork and explain the rest of it to you. Okay. The next phase. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Do you want me to go on to the no, other? That's a separate meeting. Separate meeting. Oh, the next one is a separate meeting. Yeah, so don't, only don't, this one. Don't leave. Okay. It's the BZ. It's the BZ here. Got it. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Super. Thank you all.
Then the next one is Maxwell's Glenwood Farms LLC. Anyone give us a summary of it, please? Sure. Uh, Maxwell Glenwood, Glenwood Farms submitted an application to rezone the property located at West 250 North, uh, Delphi, Indiana, on August 1st. Um, it was properly advertised in the comment on August 10th. Uh, if you guys are familiar with um, 250 North, or it's Seagulls, right. just outside of town. So it's the property that joins Seagulls to the west. Um, I believe the, yep, there's Tim. So they are present this evening. Um, it's a staff opinion. The rezoning would um, not impede the orderly development of the surrounding properties, general welfare of the public, or adjoining property owners. Um, staff provides a favorable recommendation for rezoning the property. And they are here to speak this evening. Any questions, comments from the board? Do you have a buyer for the land then? Okay. I actually live right next to the property and live right in front of Seagulls in a sense. I actually have no problem with it. So Tim actually talked to me about it and I have no problem. I have I don't see any problem with it. So here's the current Seagulls. It is no night to Property here, 80 acres, right? Exactly 80 acres. Yeah. 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 Just heard that's the name of that song. Head End County Road. I don't know about that. I have not had any uh, negative feedback. Thank you. 